Let's go ahead. I'm going to close that MEP. Just want to get a little bit of that in there for you. We're going to go back to the architecture model. Because really what I want to do is really look at the whole issue of quantity takeoff and how we can actually start thinking about just uh, pulling information out of the model so that we don't have to go through and do a quantity takeoff by hand. So I'm going to go back into Revit Architecture. And we'll start over there. So the idea is with estimating, there's really sort of two aspects to it that you have to worry about. One is the whole issue of really getting accurate quantities. Okay, beyond that, the whole issue of bidding and actually pricing things, there's a larger strategic issue really about for every different quantity, what an appropriate price is. And that's going to be based partly on kind of your historical data about how much it's cost you to build similar things in the past. It's going to be based on oh, your attitude about the competition and how competitive you think this is, how much you want the job, if there's any sort of special consideration where you're going to sort of bid it at a level. Yeah, because you really you know, want to adjust your business strategy based upon the specifics of the job. So there's really two aspects to estimating. What model-based estimating is going to be very really good for, it's going to help you with the quantities. Okay, It's not going to help you with the strategy. The strategy and sort of where you come up with good numbers is its own kind of separate issue and discipline and art. And in terms of doing those, the quantity or the, 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 the data values we're actually going to use, the best guidelines are things like, oh, if you have historical data, that's the best because you know specifically for your firm and the type of procedure you use, what the cost has been historically. If you don't have that, there's actually some really good sort of sources. RS Means has a series of guidebooks, which a lot of people use to get started with, and it's kind of a fine place to get started. If you look at, I think it's CostWorks. Let me see if I can find that for you. No, nah, that's not it. I said, RS means, some of you guys may have actually done it. Uh, means, cost works. Let me see, just look right there. There it is. Try it free for seven days, which might be long enough to go ahead and get your project done. Okay, but you can get online versions of these books because the means cost library is sort of incredibly expensive. You can sort of see, oh, for the full thing, it's like $899, which is probably more than you want to be spending. But they do have a free seven-day trial where you can go ahead and sign yourself up and get access to the online database, which may be good enough to actually sort of get some basic assembly data. And really, for where you are at this level of detail, I'd say you're going to be estimating based on assemblies. You're not going to be taking off every last screw and bolt and doorknob and light switch. You're going to be taking off oh, the total number of square feet of different things, the total number of linear feet of things, things like that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to do a little open. And what I'm going to do is go out there to that Dropbox. And I'm just going to open up the architectural model because that's fine for us to get started with. And I'll say, oh, let me find, where, am I, where did my schools go? There's my schools. Let's find uh, USC. Where'd you go? Oh, actually, I have you at a higher level right now because I kind of kept you out on the desktop a little bit. There you are, 570. I'm just going to open up the architectural model. That's going to be enough for getting us started. We can sort of you know, pull quantities out of a lot of different models and kind of aggregate it all together. That's sort of fine. But really, for getting going, there's, there's some high-level stuff you can do just right within Revit. There's some uh, you know, kind of more detailed stuff we can do in quantity takeoff. That's where we're heading towards. But let me just give you kind of a real quickie in terms of Revit. Like, in terms of actually working in Revit, the idea is that there's actually a lot of information available for you just in the quantities that are right here. You know, because Revit does know how many square feet of the wall, how many square feet of window. It has all that information in here, although you may have to set up some schedules to get access to it. So to do that, what you can do is go to the View tab and create some schedules. And let me create a schedule of uh, some quantities. You can also do material takeoffs. This is really going to have to do with whether you think about, oh, for example, if I want to think about the total square foot of each of the different wall assemblies, I'll do a schedule of quantities. If I want to figure out the total amount of concrete in the building across all of the different elements, the slabs, the columns, all the different elements, I'll do a material takeoff. It really depends whether you want to sort of do it by the type of element or the material that the element's composed of. But let's do something simple just with the type of element. Well, I'll say 
let's go ahead and we're going to create something about just walls. Okay, I'll schedule those. Let's go through and I'm going to get all the family and type. I'm going to go through and get the area. Okay, that's a starting point. Let me also go ahead and pull in something called, let me find it, there it is, it's the cost. And let's just start with that schedule as a starting point. Oh, just to help us, let's go ahead and I'm going to sort this out by family and type. That'll sort of group them together a little bit. I'll put a footer at the bottom of that. And I'm going to sort of total up the square footages. That's just going to be a kind of real quickie thing we can do. I can the total on the area. Sounds good. And I can say that is O per square feet. That's fine. So at a real high level, here's all the walls. There's the bathroom partition walls. There's the exterior stud wall, EIFS walls. I'm going to choose the ones we want. There's the interior partition walls. Here's what we can do. Even within Revit, we can do something like associate a square footage cost for that assembly, or it could really be whatever we want to do it. For example, for this uh, EIFS on the metal studs, if I go through and put a cost in, let me say that's maybe $50 a square foot. What's going to happen is it'll associate it with the entire type. So you'll see it'll actually apply it to all those different things. Maybe for the interior partition walls, they're only $20 a square foot. So I could put that in there. And we're getting close to something that looks like a little bit like an estimate, but not quite there. We still need to add something that's going to compute, uh, calculate those things together. So I can add a field in if I want to. And what I'll do is I'll add a calculated value, and I'll say, oh, this is kind of like my preliminary cost. I'll set up a formula for that. And it's going to be just area times cost. Okay, and I think what I have to do, just this is also sort of a normalization thing. I always have to remember how to do this. Say, like, one per square foot. I think that will be necessary just to kind of get the square footage out and get it back to a number. In fact, even that can be a currency if you'd like. Let's see if that'll work. Okay, now, uh, was it per square foot, per one square foot? I always have to remember. It's, uh, the, the formula language is, always takes me a minute to kind of get back to. Okay, let's say okay to that. So what it's done is it's calculated the preliminary cost for each of those different wall segments. Okay, it's done the same sort of thing for the interior walls down here. And what you can do, if you don't want to look at every individual interior wall and all that type of stuff, is maybe go back into that sorting and grouping and say, hey, instead of showing every instance, just show me the one line item for everything. Well, it's interesting. It's not going to go ahead and show it to me that way in terms of aggregating the cost. Interesting. I figured it would do that, but maybe not. Well, I'll leave it out like this for now then. Actually, let me try this. No, I got that. Let me go ahead and do the footer. That should be fine. A blank line in there, that's fine. I'm a little confused about why it's not kind of just adding that up. But if it's not going to do it, I'm not going to fight with it. I'll just kind of leave them itemized. And we'll sort of say that for that exterior EIFS wall, oh, I have to put a total on that. Let's go and do that. Let's calculate a total on that. Okay. So we don't have about $208,000 worth of that exterior wall. For the interior walls, I have over 227. Seems awfully high. I think that somehow my uh, numbers are a little bit high relative to what they should be. But that will give you some idea of how you can start, start using Revit to go through and tabulating some preliminary costs. And the idea is as you're working through, there might be some helpful guidance for you. So you can set up schedules of all of the walls. We can set up schedules of the roofs. We can set up schedules of the curtain walls, really whatever it is that you think is going to be sort of useful. And you have to always sort of figure out what it is that you think is going to be the most useful data for you to really kind of come up with a high-level benchmark for what you think the cost can be. Let's get the curtain walls. I'll get the area. I'll get the type, although I think it's going to be about the same. Let me go ahead and uh, just summarize the area. So there's a lot of square footage in there of curtain wall, but all together. 
Let's see why I didn't have that. So, oh, I have to put a grand total in there. Okay. There's about oh, 3,738 3, square feet of curtain panel right in there. Yeah. Every different sort of system will have its own kind of metric. And if you want to do this, it's just really an idea of going through and figuring out the right things to be tabulating and building different schedules so you can keep track. So at a high level, people do preliminary estimates just doing it like this. And the advantage of doing it like this is it's right in the Revit model. As soon as you go through and do something like, oh, you change the model, I go through and do something like make that parapet wall much taller. Okay, you know, all of a sudden the uh, estimate's up to date because it's just, just working directly with the model quantities. Okay, so that's a starting point. That's not the, the best way, but that's actually a pretty good way to get started with doing the cost. But I want to start with that just to kind of give you an idea of what you could do right within Revit. Okay, but you'll figure out pretty quickly that working within Revit doing this and trying to keep track of all the different schedules and all the different tables that you want to sort of aggregate together and kind of tabulate could get to be a lot of work. So you might imagine there's a better tool for doing this, and there is. There's something that lets us really take off all the different elements in the model and try to be very sort of uh, analytical and systematic about keeping track of them and associate costs with them. And it's called Autodesk Quantity Takeoff. And it's really all about, you have all these quantities in the model, you want to be able to pull them out of the model and just kind of tabulate those quantities in a way that doesn't take a lot of work with you measuring and possibly missing or making transcription errors. You got the model with accurate quantities, let's go ahead and take advantage of it. So here's how you basically approach doing that. Okay. The deal is, let's start with this. When you go through and we want to transfer things to quantity takeoff, okay, it's only going to transfer the things which are currently visible in the model. Okay, so if this view has everything I want to transfer, and I can even visibility graphics kind of make sure everything's turned on, okay, okay, it's there. Okay, we can sort of go ahead and take all these different things. And what I might want to even do, just to sort of make sure that I have these, is I will say, oh, duplicate this view. And I'm just going to like uh, keep one around that no matter what happens, no matter how I section this, no matter what happens to the view, I'm always going to be able to return to this one to uh, sort of get a view that contains everything. So just a little thing that kind of help you out along the way. Okay. Once you've gone ahead and you have a view that you think has all the elements you want to take off, what we have to do is actually transfer the data. And how we transfer the data is actually using a uh, file format called DWF. And this is a little bit messy in terms of what's going on, but it's the current way of doing it. I probably think it's going to get better in the next release, where we choose DWF. DWF is also the format, it's kind of like PDF, that we use for just sort of transmitting uh, models around to people who want to have the ability to look at them, but not really change them. So I can I take that model, I'll stick with the 3D view. I'll say next. Let me go through and I will put that in, no, let's put in that folder. Okay, lowerize, okay, DWF transfer to QTL. Again, just a name that's going to help me in terms of finding it later. Okay, and it's going to export all that stuff. What it's doing is it's really just exporting the model structure. So it's exporting all the elements in the model, um, the geometry, what information it has about the family and type. It's just basically taking the model over in a form that won't be editable as a Revit model, okay, but is editable in terms of being able to kind of grab the quantities and do things with them. So once I've gotten that exported and it's sitting out there as a DWF file, so what I can do is then open up the quantity takeoff product. And I think you guys have that available. It was definitely part of uh, the grant. So if it's not available on your machines yet, we can definitely make it available on your machines. But hopefully it'll be there. It's also available on the student community website. So uh, if you want to download that and put it on your own machine, you can do that too. So here we are on quantity takeoff. It all starts really with just creating a new project as opposed to opening an existing one. Let's start with that. We're going to go ahead and basically give our project some sort of name. 
And this is going to be my sample QTO takeoff for USC. I'll just put it in my documents folder for now. It needs to know what sort of uh, unit system we're working with, imperial or metric, and what kind of currency system we want to work with. The third choice is really this issue of, do we want to bring in a catalog? Let's talk about that. A catalog is really, if you think about work breakdown structures, that's really what I think is probably the most common sort of analogy I could use for it. It's really just some hierarchy of how you like to organize your elements, okay, so that you can sort of stuff the different items in the model under those different headings and those categories and just aggregate and organize things. So it's really like a hierarchical outline of how you think about things and really you use that outline to actually start associating costs with individual elements. So they have the CSI 16 and 48 formats, they have the uniformat, or I might just start out with none to start with. What's going to happen is you work, you're going to go ahead and sort of create your own catalog, your own work breakdown structure, put things under it, and then ultimately you'll end up saving your catalog structure because your catalog is really where you're storing your intelligence about how to take those different elements in the model and apply costs to them, just how you think about them in terms of what the materials cost and the installation cost just for each of those different elements. So I'm going to leave it blank for now, but ultimately, this is going to be where you take your intelligence from one project and apply it to another project. It's basically by saving away a catalog and using it on a different project. So I'll say next. I need to add the model. Let's see if I can go on out there and find it. Where did I call that thing, and where did I put it? I thought I put it out in here, in my documents library. I swear I put it out in here. Oh, let's go back over to Reddit and kind of make sure. Let me just save as again. I'll pay an awful lot of attention to where I'm putting it this way, or export. There you are. Oh, I put it in, never mind. I didn't put it there. I put it inside the System 5B integration. Okay. Never mind. Let's go back out to uh, Dropbox and USC. Okay, there we go. That's it right there. And I'll bring it on in. What it's going to do now is actually bring in all that model geometry into quantity takeoff and bring all the individual elements in there so I can start uh, just associating costs with them. So I'll close this up. And let's take a look at what happens. It's going to bring in that model and actually show us a 3D representation of that model. We'll load in all that stuff. Okay, and let me close that up. So that little uh, thing that says workbook at the bottom. That is our model. Okay, and we can go ahead and uh, rotate it around, take a look at it. If we open up the model tab, let me sort of pin that down for a second. Oops, not close it, but pin it. Well, that's not looking good. Okay, what you can do is go through and choose individual elements. So for example, if you want to choose all the roofs or all the walls, I can select them here. And as I'm selecting them here, can you see that they're actually highlighting over there in the model window? Say, so here's all the curtain panels, whatever it is in there. What you can do is individually, I can go through and choose anything that I want to take off, because sometimes you don't want to take off the whole model, you just want to sort of take off a part of it. I can expand down here and say, oh, let's get all those EIFS walls that don't have a pattern on them. Okay, and what I can do is say, and if I right click on it, say take off this item, and what it'll do is actually grab all those and pull them out and kind of put them in something called my takeoff. Okay, and what that'll do when I take them off, let me just show you, is it'll grab those. It's transferred 15 things that it found that were in that sort of family type. And what's happening now, I think, is if I go over to the takeoff tab, you'll find that underneath there, there are a bunch of walls that have the same type, and there they all are, and you can sort of see them, one at a time. 
and you can choose them independently. But it's basically just pulling all those things across. Okay, so we can go through and take off individual elements and kind of pull them one at a time and only grab the things that we want. Or what you might do at a really high level is just take off the entire model. It just kind of depends really what you need to do. So either grab the specific items, again, by going to the model. Now, where did my model window go? Window. So this model's there. Close that up. Let's see if it's down too far. Hmm. QT and I, QTO and I sometimes fight with each other a little bit in terms of the tabs and what has to come up. There's the model window again. So I could choose something else like the stairs. I grab them and I can take them off and take them off individually. Okay. Or well, what I'm going to show you that is actually kind of a cool thing to do is, I'll go back over to the takeoff. I'll just get rid of this one because I'm going to sort of take it off as part of the big group. Say goodbye to that. So the takeoff is empty right now. We'll go back to the model, and what I can do is say just take off the entire model. So I can search and find something. Let me just take the entire model off. And what's going to happen is it's going to go through the entire model and just grab all of those different elements from the entire project structure. And pull them off. Okay, it takes a couple passes to do it all, but when it gets done, it's going to report the total number of elements that it thinks are involved there. Okay, about 1,244 things came across. That was a lot quicker than me having to do that. Let me close that up. Okay. If I go to the Takeoff tab now, and I expand underneath here, you'll see we have all sorts of different items. So here's all the curtain wall double glass doors. Here's all the single glass doors. All the elements are kind of floating around in here. Okay. Where well, that's an individual element, that's kind of a group of elements. Let's find all the, all the lavatories or something like that. Now, there's this hierarchy over here, the work breakdown structure. And what you can do is create your own kind of categories over here. Let's see if I can figure out a way to do that. I can create a new group. So this is going to be a uh, work breakdown structure like 100.1, whatever your structure scheme is, you can put a description in there. So this is going to be all the plumbing fixtures, whatever it is. But what I can then do is actually just sort of move things from these categories, the way they came off in the Revit model, and kind of pull them down into the work breakdown structure. Okay. And why do I do that? It's really just an issue of either you want to sort of follow the whole hierarchy of the way it came out of Revit, or you want to sort of set it up into a hierarchy along the way you think of the work breakdown structure. So it's really more just a bookkeeping thing about all the elements are available there, and the idea is to sort of resort them, reorganize them into the structure that you like instead. And then after you set up a structure, we can do this thing where you export it as a catalog, and then you can kind of load it in automatically next time. But once you've gone ahead and found something, like an element that you want to take off, you can think about a way to go through and quantify that. So, for example, these plumbing fixtures, all these wall-mounted lavatories, oh, we might think about a lot of different ways these things would be quantified. And every type of building element has its own sort of method that seems to lend itself the best to how you do it. For example, lavatories, I might actually think about just being an item which I'll call an each item, where for every one of them, I might think about that there's just sort of a cost for installing each of them. So the way I would do that, here if I want to indicate that, is I choose, okay, not the individual item, I'm going to choose the group of items. Okay, that's kind of an important thing. It's the group because it's going to apply to all of them. You can pull up something where you say, well, how is that defined? I'm going to define that. Is it linear? Is it an area? Is it a volume or a count? That each would be more of a count. And then I can sort of assign a cost to that. Oh, it's going to be, you can think about either a materials cost, a labor's cost, or just sort of a combined cost, however you want to do it. Maybe each of those things is going to cost me $150 and cost me $100 to install each of them. 
something like that. I'll say okay. Okay, let's go back over to the takeoff. So they're all there, and now it's all defined as a count item. Things are kind of good. Okay, let's go ahead and try something else. As opposed to those plumbing fixtures, they weren't very interesting. They're probably not the highest dollar item we have to sort of worry about. So let's kind of think about some ones that are sort of uh, more meaningful to us. Let's go for those walls. See if I can find them. Roof stairs, those walls. Oh, please, yes. Let's stop and ask some questions. Yes. Yes. You can actually change it on the fly because really the Revit objects are universal. They'll understand it both ways. Actually, yeah, there's not much you can do in Revit. It's really just when you bring it in here, the items will still show up in the Revit structure, and you have to sort of manually move them into the CSI structure. Now, to help us, what we can do, in fact, you'll see this when we talk about 4D simulation. I'll show you in a little while, a little later today, how we can actually add variables to Revit to actually help us. If you want to assign a CSI work section there in Revit, that would then give us a field that we can select by and do some searching to help us with that. Oh, no so let's just give you a couple more to kind of finish this out. Let's go to walls. Here's this EIFS wall. Let me go ahead and choose the properties of that one. You'll see there's a bunch of individual ones here. And I can say properties. Walls are something I tend to think about those as being estimated on an area basis. So I can go to the cost data. Maybe that is oh, $30 per square foot for the materials and $15 a square foot for the wall, or whatever it is. And again, these data, yeah, this is coming out of all this means of historical data. This, there's really no good place besides history and intuition to figure out where these things are coming from. So I'll say OK to that. It'll show up now in the takeoff. Actually, it's next to show up in something called the workbook in a second. Let me do one other one there just so we sort of have an idea of something. Oh, the railings is something I like to sort of also bring out as an example. Railings are something I tend to think about railings as being, oh, for me, I think about railings being like, a, in my mind, they're a linear object. I estimate those based on the, uh, the number of linear feet. So maybe for the railing, it is all like $50 on your foot and $100 on your foot for all the welding, something like that. Let me get one more in there just so we have the final example. Oh, like doors and windows, I think, are a good example because doors and windows, you know, everyone has a slightly different way of estimating those. When I take them off, I tend to think about them really being as more of an each item. So for a door, I'll think about it as having a cost of like, you know, $500 per door installed, something like that. But if I go for the single glass doors, those are all the office doors in the building. Let me choose those. I'll say properties. I'll say it's an each account item. And I can associate the values here. Oh, it's going to be $200 for each door and $100 to install each of them. Okay, so the idea is to go through and find in that takeoff the items that you think are most important, and what I should probably do is move them down into the work breakdown structure as I'm sort of choosing specific things so that I can keep track of like which things I've associated costs with and which things I haven't associated costs with. Okay, so for example, I could go through and take all those single glass doors or something like that and maybe move them down into the work breakdown structure. Although I should probably have a different section for them. Is it going to work for me? Oh, there we go. Under there. And again, this is all just sort of an issue of really 
you know, our, my workway event structure should actually have levels of hierarchy and be appropriate for what I want to do. But once you've gone ahead and taken these things off and associated some costs, what you do is you then switch to a window called the workbook. And the workbook is where it actually sort of all comes together, where you can sort of see, here are the things I've taken off, and here's the 24 of those, and the 6 of those, and whatever else is going on in here, all oh, under walls. There's 4,000 square feet of one type, there's 8,000 square feet of another one, whatever it is in here. Okay. It's showing us the quantities, it's not showing us the cost just yet, what I need to do is actually right-click on here and say, let me see, the, uh, I'm going to turn off the marks just because I would rather have that real estate on my screen for something else. I'll show the labor cost, I'll show the materials cost, and maybe the total cost. And at this point, this is very much like an Excel spreadsheet, where the data is over here, that's actually coming out of the model, okay? But for the other things, things like, oh, for the unit cost, if that one's going to be $10 per square foot and going to be $25 per square foot, or if it turns out that number at the last minute is going to change, it's not 32, it's actually 29.50. I can put it in there, and you'll see that it's all sort of adding up over here. It's adding up towards the top, but I sort of have the total material, the total cost. And at this point, it's very much like, yeah, just Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so what you can do is once you take the quantities off and decide which are the quantities that you want to care about, you know, over here, you can either associate the costs here, kind of within quantity takeoff, and report them out here. Some people prefer to do the other thing. What they'll do is they'll take this and they'll export the quantities, and they'll export the quantities to, oh, Timberline. We can export them to Excel. There's a number of different things we can do in terms of exporting them to other systems. I tend to actually like to just keep them in here. But the final step, and I'm going to sort of like rush this a little bit quickly just because we're going to break here in a minute and kind of shift to a different room so we can kind of continue with the next piece is just reporting. And again, if this is all going by too fast, uh, let's get back in touch after the session and we can kind of guide you through some specific questions for people who are working on that. We can create a custom report. What we decide is really what we want to include. So if I'll include both these elements in the work breakdown structure. You decide whether you only want the high-level summary, that's the top-level item, whether you want the groups or actually everything down below. I'm going to include the items and objects, too, to give me a little more detail. Under columns, we can choose what we want to see, whether it's the total cost or whether we want to see the individual uh, cost components, which I think total cost comes automatically. Let me put the label and the material in there. Uh, I could put in some information if I want. This is all just information that's coming out of the model. Put the dimensions in there, whatever it is that you want. You can sort of lay out the report in terms of whether you want headers and footers and things like that. But when you say create report, it's going to go through and basically pull that big database full of information. Okay. Pull it all together there and actually summarize something that looks like the, uh, the full listing there. Okay, let me hang on and get something just real quickly, see if that's the next class calling. Hang on just a second here. Len Katz, can I help you? Hey, very good, very good. We're actually in the middle of an online class right now, but I want to call back and kind of like a touch base with you about what's going on next week. So, so, so when's, good, when's gonna be a good time to reach you? Actually, now I'm, I'm actually at Penn State this week. That, fantastic. Why don't we shoot for round nine? Excellent. Fantastic. And hey, no, we're good. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, sorry about that. Just uh, was doing a little bit of coordination for something going on tomorrow. 
Uh, but that's really the gist of QTO, kind of there at a really high level. So let's just kind of stop and take a couple questions there, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of shift gears a little bit. Well, I'm going to move to a different room and get hooked back up again, and we'll continue by looking at some of uh, the, the clash detection and the 3D simulation. But any sort of general things about QTO? I know it's a lot to kind of, kind of get a hold of right away, but it makes pretty short work out of pulling the quantities out, and then it really comes down to the artistry of trying to figure out what the costs are. Go ahead, Philip, if you can speak up a little louder. I'm, I'm sort of right here, three or four from the microphone. Right now, it's still manual. This is actually, yeah, you know, as if the million dollar question, it's a very, very good question. There's not an automatic link right now. There's some other products, you know, some non autoist products that do a better job of linking you to some of the cost databases. But this is still, I'll call it relatively cost agnostic. So, no, there isn't a really great way. So, it might almost be better. You know, some people do things where they export the quantities and then using an Excel spreadsheet, they do the matching or take it into Timberline or something like that. But now, at least as far as I know, and I don't know everything about this, there may be something that, uh, you know, does do that. I don't know a way to sort of import the cost table. Although, what will happen is after you've built the cost table on the cost catalog, you can reuse it. So, after you build it for one project, what would happen in your company? that you'd have a work breakdown structure with the costs associated with the different items, and then you could just reapply it to the new quantities and the new project, because you already took the time to build up the catalog once. Yeah, actually, you can. This is really, really it's, if you really want to play with this and get more detail, when you go back to the takeoff window, and you do this whole thing when you're uh, setting up the properties, I did sort of a really kind of gross way. Just materials, labor at a very high level. If you want to start sort of playing around with that, we can actually start mucking around with these formulas and then, like putting in time and putting in rates. And there's even this whole thing about assemblies and we can set up crews of carpenters versus queues, queues of millwrights and different types of equipment. You can really get very, very detailed about it. Okay, but showing you that, it's a little bit on what we need to do today. If you really want to dig into it, yeah, you can definitely set up a much more detailed cost model. For example, if you're familiar with Vico or some of the other systems, you can really get quite detailed about that. With some work, you can get to it in here. But I kind of like using this for at a high level getting the quantities out. I might actually do that whole thing where I apply the late uh, productivity rates. I might take that external into Excel just because I think it'll be easier for you to manipulate it over there. Fantastic. Then let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to transition over to a different room where the, uh, the Penn State students are meeting so we can get ourselves set up over there. Why don't you go just leave the system on on your end and uh, just rejoin me in about, oh, like, uh, say, seven to ten minutes.